versus the Garmin R10. Another comparison. This is one that people have been asking about uh, since I've been putting these little comparisons together. Um, and the thing that people have been leaving in the comments is, yeah, we all know that the R10 is pretty good when it comes to ball speed. We all know it's pretty good when it comes to backspin, especially with these RCT balls. What we don't think it's very good at is the spin axis. And what spin axis is, the, the angle at which the ball is spinning back. Um, this allows the, both these units to algorithmically calculate the, the curve of the ball through the air. So the GC3 does this by actually uh, it, it's optical, it's got cameras so it's taking pictures as the ball is spinning, so it knows if it's spinning perfectly back and forward or a little bit to one side or a little bit to the other side. And because of that, it calculates the way the ball is curving. When you're playing golf on a GC3, on a GC quad, um, in a simulator, at least my experience, I have never experienced a situation where I hit the ball and I look up and it's kind of, it's going the wrong way, right? We see this sort of thing when you hit it off the toe or off the heel. There's something called gear effect um, on the ball. That is, when you hit it off the toe, it gives it some, some hook spin, if you're a right-handed golfer, to and we see this in real life when you hit it off the toe, it kind of starts off to the right, curves back to the fairway, or close to the fairway, or too far, maybe sometimes. The GC3, it doesn't read the spin axis as well, or at least that's what we've been told. That's been my experience. We'll test it out here today. But when you hit one off the toe on the GC3, it sees it as just a right shot, curving right. So there will be times, well, again, we'll see this. I'm going to try and set up some situations where this happens. There'll be times when you hit it off the toe, the GC3 shows it going left, the R10 shows it going right. Now, does this actually happen? How often does it happen? We're going to test that out, so I'm going to hit some shots with a uh, driver and with maybe a 7 iron today. Um, I've got the R10 set up, I've got the GC3 set up, I've got E6 on the iPad, and we've got FSX on the computer, which is projecting to the to the screen up there. So I'm gonna hit some shots in some situations where I hit it off the heel, hit it off the toe, try and see if we can see that uh, spin axis difference. And then we'll come back and talk about how different is it? Is it a deal breaker if you care about simulation golf? That sort of stuff. So really excited for this video, really excited for the test. I know a lot of people are interested in it. I'm not sure how scientific I can get with this, but we're gonna just look at a few shots and see what the differences are. If you're liking this content, if you like what I've done so far, feel free to give me a like. Um, subscribe to the channel if you want. Would appreciate it if you're along for the ride. Um, I'm mostly doing this for fun for myself. I'm, I'm, I love golf and I'm a nerd, so I like um, testing out all this stuff. So if you're like me, you're interested in this stuff, feel free to subscribe and like I said, like the video if you want to. But yeah, here we go. I've got my RCT Pro V1. I've got the R10 and the GC3 set up. Let's test that out. I think I'm going to start with driver. That's where we see most of the differences. So let's start with the driver. All right, we're recording the screen on the iPad. So we'll have kind of a split screen like you might have seen before on the channel. I've got my Ping G425 Max driver. Uh, I'm going to try and hit some shots off the toe and off the heel. It shouldn't be too difficult for me to try to hit some shots off the toe. It's, I kind of live over there. But we'll, uh, we'll hit some and we'll see how it goes. Okay, so we've already done this in a few of my other videos. Right now we're establishing a baseline of sort of how well does the Garmin do compared to the GC3 in sort of normal conditions when 
hit a normal shot, I hit it in the middle of the face. Those last two, I hit well, um, and the results were pretty similar. So I'll maybe try to hit one more good one just to make sure we're, we sort of all are nodding our heads at the fact that the R10 is pretty good in this situation and we'll hit some kind of wacky ones. different is that? The, the GC3 was on the green, the R10 was in the right rough. So that's one of those situations where I hit it off the toe, they produced very different results. For the GC3, that was a nice high toe draw right back to the middle for the R10 <laughs> it was in the right rough, it was in the bunker up the right See, I told you I wouldn't have to try hard to hit it off the toe I have to try to hit it off the heel though. that was kind of off the heel that might be a gear effect situation. So that was a little bit off the heel. Um, we got a, a little slight draw with the GC3 and a more pronounced draw with the Garmin. One negative of the E6 system is that I don't think we can get spin access. Uh, like we can um, the GC3. So I'm going to hit a couple more shots here, maybe try and hit another toe shot, another heel shot, and then I'm going to go into the Garmin app. I know they have a lot more data parameters. We'll see if we can get spin access there to get a good true comparison of the two. Try and get off the toe here. hard to try to do that. Okay, so we only care about spin axis here. I'll hit a few shots. <laughs> We've proven that I can't try to hit it off the toe or off the heel, so I'll hit a few shots. I will inevitably hit one off the toe or the heel. We'll see how it goes. Okay, that one according to Garmin, spin axis 1.1 degrees left. That was 254 going 263, 2770 direction. This is 4.7 spin axis right, 248 going 269, 2865 direction. So pretty good read, uh, although the spin axis was a little off about five degrees off, six degrees maybe. Carmen, 2.4 spin axis left, 245 carry, almost 2,900 backspin, GC3, 30, 56 backspin, 248 carry, 6.2 spin axis to the right. Some of this too is conditioned on how well I set up the Garmin. I did my best to set it up, you know, level, square to the line, on the same line. There's a toe shot. Okay, interesting there. It was off the toe, but I kind of kind of blocked it out to the right. So it didn't whip back like normal. But that one had 4.1 degrees of left spin axis according to 
the GC3, the Garmin 11.1 right spring axis. Again, though, like the carry is pretty close, 256 on the GC3, 245 in the Garmin. The backspin is pretty close, 2235 on the GC3, 2344 on the Garmin, but that spin axis is off. This one will be interesting. Garmin 2.1 degree. Yeah, oh my gosh, look at that. The Garmin 2.1 degrees of right spin axis. The GC3 14.1 degrees of right spin. Is everything else pretty similar? Carry 227 versus 229 on the Garmin. Spin 3070 versus 3055. That spin axis is off. Okay, let me try. Try to get a normal one this time. I don't want to do again. At least I felt like it. Twenty-eight seventy-six back spin versus two thousand. Two forty-five carry versus two forty-three. Seventeen degree left spin axis on the GC three versus eleven point two spin axis left on the Garmin. say here GC3 249 carry versus 248 carry on Garmin 2824 spin on the GC3 versus 2711 spin on the Garmin 0.9 right spin axis on GC3 versus 6.7 left on the Garmin I'm trying to hit one more good or bad or and different, and then we'll talk about them. <laughs> That'll be an interesting one, we'll see. Hit it hard. All right, GC3 numbers, or sorry, Garmin numbers first. 2455 backspin, 264 carry, 9.6 degrees left. GC3, 254 carry, so the Garmin had at 10 yards more. 2527 backspin, so we're pretty close. Spin axis, 19.1 degrees left versus 9.6 degrees left. Okay, let's try one more. And man, I'd really like to hit another. You know, when we're it's off the tone, they go different directions. We'll see if we can do it. That's it well. Interesting one there, though. It's spin axis is five degrees right. Um, Garmin looks like it went left on the GC3. Yeah, seven degrees left. So, all right. Okay. That's a lot of drivers. That's probably enough drivers. I'm going to hit some irons now just to see if the differences are as pronounced with irons. So let's do that. All right, I've got my eight iron here. We're going to try and hit a few shots, you know, well, a few shots off the toe, a few shots off the heel. Again, the goal is to try and see if the spin axis is all different. So here we go. 8 iron, still using the RCT Pro V1. Well, that was off the toe. I 
I'm curious to see what the numbers look like for these shots. Like, I know the spin axis is weird for drivers. Is it equally weird for irons? I'm not sure. I'm not sure if there's as much gear effect on a flat-faced club. But here we've got 148 to carry, 152 on the GC3, 6,000 spin versus 61, almost 6,200 spin. Spin axis 0.9 degrees to the right on the GC3, 3.4 degrees to the right. So we're in the ballpark. Oh, this is interesting. Garmin showed that as a right spin axis. I sure don't think so. Yeah, okay. So Garmin, 1.6 degrees right spin axis. GC3, 13.7 degrees left spin axis. And that is, I believe, the GC3 on that one. Now when I shut down the face, I came over it. Let's try again. Pretty good shot there. Maybe a touch off the toe. But pretty darn good. Alright, 3.1 left spin axis on the GC3, 2.8 right spin axis on the arm. Skinny, but in the middle. Right, 5.6 degrees right spin axis on the Garmin. 1.9 degrees right spin axis on the GC3. One more. I haven't really had a good one yet. Let's try and get it out. Another off the toe. A lot more successful hitting it off the toe with pin irons, I guess, than I with my driver. That one, 3.7 degrees right on the R10, 3.4 degrees left on the GC3. Maybe there is a little gear, act, gear effect there, because that was definitely off the toe. Alright, I'm going to be done hitting now. We'll come back in a second and talk about results, what I think happened, what I saw. So, here we go. All right, so the most difficult thing to determine in this test is how much of what we saw was real differences in the way that these two units are reading the shots and how much of it was operator error in setting up the Garmin. I'm not entirely sure how much uh, the Garmin needs to be perfectly aligned behind your target in order to read the spin axis correctly. I would think that that's a measurement that it could read um, maybe regardless of if the unit is a little bit you know, off of center. I did my best to align the unit you know, using the laser um, to my line, the same line that the GC3 is lined up on. Um, could it have been a few degrees off? I think it certainly could have. Does that impact the way it reads the spin axis? I don't know. It probably does a little bit. But that said, that we could take that comment and put it to the side and talk about the results that we saw. For driver, there were at least a couple of shots that I hit it off the toe, I look up, the GC3 shows a shot that starts to the right, curves back to the fairway. The one shot actually was on the green out there, 275, so that was, that was like 
that would have been a good drive, would have been in the fairway. On E6, the simulation software for the Garmin R10, it started right and went right and went the right wrong. So those are two distinctly different outcomes for the same shot. Which one do I believe? I believe the GC3. The GC3 has cameras. It is actually physically taking pictures of the way the ball is spinning. It uses those pictures to understand how the ball is rotating. Is it rotating straight back? Is it rotating like this? Is it rotating like this? And then it calculates the trajectory. I've got an engineer friend who I was explaining all this to, and he told me, you know, ballistic physics is easy. There are aerodynamics and measurements for wind, whatever, that we're not dealing with here because we're just on the driving range. Those are maybe a little more complicated to, to figure out. But ballistic physics is easy. You shoot a projectile up with a certain angle and a certain speed, and gravity does its thing, and it falls down. And there's some, you know, there's spin and all that stuff. These things are calculating it. I trust the thing that's actually taking pictures and calculating the true spin of the ball versus the unit that is just reading it for 10 feet of space and then making an algorithmic calculation. Plus, that aligns with what I would expect in real life. I've played enough golf to know when I hit a drive off the toe, I'm gonna to look up and it's gonna start right and it's gonna hook back into the fairway. That's something I do a lot. I hit it off the toe a lot. I hit a draw a lot. It doesn't start right and fall right all that often when I hit it that way. So, is the GC3 more accurate on spin axis? Yes, definitively. If you are using your home golf simulator to approximate real life golf, does the Garmin do that? Kind of. It does it when you hit the ball in a way, in a normal way, off the middle of the face, the way that you would, that that the guard, the unit can read the results without any complicating factors. It does a nice job. There were quite a few shots that I hit where I hit the ball in the middle of the face, and both the Garmin unit and the GC3 showed a similar ball flight, similar kind of results. If you're using it to compete in simulator leagues, are you gonna be frustrated? Probably. I think at some point, if, if you're using it to try and get better at golf, to play in simulator leagues, if, if you want to use your golf simulator seriously in any way, you know, whether that's, like I said, making your game better, competing in leagues, if you're like a teaching pro, the Garmin R10, I don't think is your, it doesn't fit your use case, right? Like the Garmin R10 is a great, great entry point to simulator golf. If you want to um, just get started with the simulator, if you live in some place in the north like Minnesota, like I am, and it's cold and you want to get some swings in in your garage and actually see some ball flight, understanding the caveats of how real is it, how not real is it. If that's your use case, I don't see any reason to not get the R10. Like, I don't think there's any need to spend more than the $600 that the R10 costs to get that. Now, if you're more serious, I think the R10 will frustrate you because it's close, but it's not quite there. There's a few other units that are coming out that are interesting. The Rapsodo MLM2 Pro 
just launched at the PGA show like a couple weeks ago. There's YouTube videos out talking about it from the PGA show and, and there might even be some like in the wild first impressions um, MLM2 Pro videos. That unit is really promising. It has both a radar and some cameras um, and you need to use special balls, sort of like the RCT balls, but they have special dot patterns colored in on these balls um, that allow it to optically, visually read the spin axis, the way the ball is rotating. And the initial impressions I've seen are that the spin axis is quite good compared to um, a unit like, like the GC3 or the GC Quad. Uh, I think Repsoto said it's within percentage points uh, in terms of spin axis. So that could be a game changer. Um, the downside to that one is that it's a subscription model. The unit itself is $700 and then it's $200 a year for this subscription, which gives you access to many things. But the most important thing is it gives you access to that optical spin axis ball tracking. So basically, you need to spend that $200 a month in order to get the data that you want out of that unit. Um, there's potential for that to be like a GC3 Lite if it works. All indications are that it does work, but it's, it's a subscription-based thing, and that's something you need to be aware of. Um, for serious golfers, sort of the only other thing is this GC3 or the GC Quad, um, the camera-based units, especially for indoors. Um, I, I really think you need a camera-based unit if you want to do simulator golf seriously, if you're a teaching pro, um, if you play in leagues and you want to take it seriously, that sort of thing. You probably need a camera-based unit. There is a new um, camera-based unit coming out, the, the iMini supposedly coming out in April. There are some doubts as to whether that's going to happen. Um, direct competitor to the GC3, it has two cameras instead of three. I think it's like $5,000 price point, so you're saving a couple thousand bucks over the GC3. In the long run, for me, I would trust the GC3 over the IXO Mini. We'll have to wait and see. The, like I said, the Repsoto MLM2 Pro is very interesting. Again, caveat downside, the subscription model. So I think there's really a couple of different use cases here. Use case one, you're not super serious about your simulator golf. You live somewhere that you want a quick setup, easy to use, mobile launch monitor, you have access to the Pro V1 RCT balls. I think if that's your use case, I'd buy the Garmin all day long. All day long I'd buy the Garmin. It, based on this test, based on the other tests that I've done here in the golf barn compared to the GC3, which I've said it before, I'll say it again, I think is like the gold standard of consumer grade launch monitors. The Garmin really holds its own especially with the RCT balls, backspin is really close, ball speed is really close. Uh, it, does, it does a really nice job. The one downfall, the one downside um, that we see with this Garmin unit is just that spin axis bugaboo. And this test, I think, showed that that exists, that problem exists. And it is true that the Garmin R10 does not read the spin axis with nearly as much fidelity as a unit like the GC3. It's about $7,000 cheaper, so, you know, I guess take it with a grain of salt, but what you're paying for is accuracy, and you're never gonna get a shot that you don't think is what's happening in real life with your GC3 versus on the R10, it happens, it happens not infrequently that the shots are kind of weird when you're playing simulator golf. I think you just need to figure out how do I intend to use my golf simulator hardware 
my launch monitor, what's my use case for it, and how much is the accuracy worth to me. Now, I am, I like to consider myself a pretty serious golfer. I play a lot of golf during the summer in Minnesota when we can. I'm a pretty decent player. I attempt to compete in the state amateur stuff here in Minnesota. I've been really impressed with the R10 this winter, my first winter with the golf simulator. I have noticed some of its shortcomings. The spin axis thing is a major issue. As a starting launch monitor, sort of a, a, a starter kit, I think it's great. I do intend to upgrade at some point in the future, whether that's to the GC3, whether that's to the IXO Mini, whether that's to the Rapsodo MLM2 Pro, I'm not sure. We're in a space right now in golf launch monitor technology where there's a lot of stuff going on. There's a lot of companies bringing stuff out to market. And I think that there is a price point that is cheaper than the GC3 that can deliver nearly as quality accuracy, probably more expensive than, than the Garmin R10. The MLM2 Pro um, is interesting. If you think about it like as a five-year investment, the first year of the subscription is fee is free. It's 700 bucks in total. So over five years, it's $1,500. I think that's a pretty reasonable sweet spot in terms of um, in terms of price. Now, on top of that, you need to think about, okay, am I going to subscribe to GS Pro um, Golf Simulator software? I think that's another 250 a month. So then you're talking five-year um, cost is 27. 50 for the GS Pro subscription and the Rep Soto subscription and the unit. Then if you have a gaming computer and you need to buy that as well, that's another thousand bucks. So we're talking almost four thousand dollars for for that setup. Um, you know, you'll have to think about in the long term, do I want to just pop for the GC3, which is seventy five hundred dollars, but I know you know there's no subscription fee. I've got it for life. I trust the quality. You know, I don't know. And as I figure that out for myself with my own golf simulator, um, you know, you guys who are watching the, my channel are gonna be along for the ride and I'm gonna be transparent about it. I'm gonna, I do a lot of research. Like I said, I'm, I'm a nerd and I like golf. So I do a lot of research before I make purchases. And as I figure out what I think is the best option for me going forward, I'm certainly gonna share that with you guys. For now, my little Garmin unit Despite its flaws, I'm happy with it, and it's it's as close as I think anything can be for six hundred dollars. I mean, that's that's hard to fathom how cheap it is. I'm gonna eventually get something different, but for now, with my purpose being, let's just hit some balls in the winter, stay halfway loose until summer comes, um, I'm, I'm happy with the R10. So that's the video. Uh, thanks for hanging out. Again, give me a like if you enjoyed the content. Subscribe. Leave me some comments. Um, I expect this video to get a couple comments at least about how I tested and how the garden was set up. And feel free to ask. I'm happy to answer as well as I can. Um, but I thought this was really interesting. Like I said at the beginning, this is something that people have asked about. So I'm trying to deliver, uh, you know, what I can. Um, for, for people that are curious. So, um, thanks for watching. Appreciate it again. We will see you on the golf course. Thanks guys. Bye.